everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Leanna and today we're talking about Depop. So first and foremost, I am very, very new to Depop and I know nothing or very, very little about it. So this is just going to be a very basic kind of video just to sort of give you an overview of Depop. And right now what I'm doing is I am cross-listing from Poshmark over to Depop so it's a little bit easier. I'm not starting from scratch going, oh my gosh, I have to do photos and all that. So I am using my Crosslist Magic to just import things over. So there's a couple of things that you do need to know about Depop. Um, you sign up like you do for any other program or platform, I should say. There's no cost to list and there's no seller fees. So keep that in mind when you're pricing. I think all the, the buyers pay everything, they pay the shipping, they pay everything. So that's just the way it's set up. So you're going to need a username. You know, I just use the same as I've been using for my Poshmark closets. And yeah, so things I've noticed. First and foremost, Depop is more of a younger platform. And I just do air quotes because fashion has no age in my, in my estimation. But the majority of the audience and the buyers are younger people. So you want to get the styles that they want. So right now I'm going through my closet and I'm just adding things that I think have that sort of street quality or that somebody younger would really like, as opposed to some of the other clothing that I have is more um, conservative. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. On Depop, you only get eight photos. So for me, when I am cross-listing, I have to remember that. So I go into my listing on Poshmark and what I do is I rearrange the photos. So I have the eight because it'll take the first eight and trans transpose them, transpose them over onto Depop. So I just want to make sure that I have the eight photographs that I want. The same thing applies with photos there, you know, clean white backgrounds, uh, clear photos, lots of good light. There tends to be a lot of modeling done on Depop. I will not be modeling these clothes because more than likely they are too small for me. And I'm just not into the modeling bit. I do have a mannequin that I use, so I think that's going to be more for me at the moment. But there is a lot of modeling happening over there for sure. Um, you fill out your description just like you would. It's interesting because they don't really have a title. Like it's not, it's like on Poshmark, you go the pictures, your title, your description. This goes, you know, your pictures and then you go into your description where you put all the information that's possible, measurements, everything that you would normally put into your listing. That's where you put it. But then they have a lot of drop down so that you, you have to figure out what category it goes in. And that's a scroll, which I find really annoying, but you know, it is what it is. You scroll till you get to the right one. And then it has another drop down where you sort of go off. Like for instance, I did some swimsuits. So I went to women's swimsuits and then it had another drop down where I picked swim, a uh, swimsuit as opposed to a bikini or a tankini. So you have to do that. They have things like, what occasion you would be wearing it and you can pick a couple of things like that. Those are keywords They're basically getting your keywords in there. If you know what the material is, you can put, uh, think up to four material things in there. They also have one called body fit. So if you do have a plus size or a petite or maternity or extra tall, you can add that in as well. They don't have just a regular body fit option though. Um, brand. This is something I found really interesting. If you have a brand that is not well known, they will just put it under other. They won't let you just add in the brand. So like I listed, I didn't forget what I listed over there that I had this and it says other and I'm like, uh. so I'm going to see how that works because to me, maybe what it is is that the audience and the buyers are more interested in the style as opposed to the brand. So I'm hoping that's what's driving traffic is going to be the styles. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, and then you, of course you have your size, your quantity, the condition of the item. They have a drop down, uh, brand new, uh, new without tags kind of thing. Excellent, good, whatever. Uh, so you get, it's a drop down thing. It's actually quite easy to list. Like I was not finding it hard especially since, you know, I was cross-listing, a lot of it was filled out. It's just learning what absolutely has to be in there and what you can skip. 
it's a learning curve, right? So then you can go to what they call enhancing your listing and you add the color, uh, the source. And that means, is it pre-loved? Is it vintage? Is it dead stock? I listed something because I had, um, if you remember, if you've been around for a while, I bought earrings, some jewelry off of a wholesaler as an experiment. And I still have them. So they're, they're new, but they're not dead stock. And there's no option for just brand new or wholesale. So I had to ask on a Facebook group, like, what do I do? And they said, just leave it blank. So I just left it blank. Um, then you have, if you know the age of the item, like there's modern from the, the 2000s, I was gonna say the noughties, cause I watch a lot of British TV, the nineties, the seventies, whatever. And then you have your style tags and I believe you're allowed to pick three. So that's what you do. You set up your location this is for shipping pur purposes, and you, you're going to need to know approximate weights and measures for this. So I am treating my Depop shop, I think it's called, um, just like I do Posh US. I am using Stallion to you, you know get the USPS sort of prices, and I'm going from there. So right now I'm experimenting with my shipping costs because I have a fairly good idea of give or take, and I mean, I also have my my shipping expert sitting beside me that I usually can ask. So you're going to need to know weights and measures. I act like I am in America. America, I didn't say that right at all. I, I, I put it in that I am in America, I'm in the States, because that's what Stallion will do for me. So that's how I am dealing with it. You can be in Canada, you can say you're in Canada. But your shipping costs, especially if you're using Canada Post, they're going to be really high. So you might want to check out a cross-border shipper or even check out Depop's uh, shipping if you can, if it applies to you. But I think if you're in Canada, only Canada, I don't know if you can use it or not. See, I really, really new to the platform. It's really strange, but we're going to talk about that in a sec. Uh, yeah, so you need to know about the shipping weights and measures. When you're trying a new platform, if you're coming from Poshmark where you don't really have to worry about the weights and measures, start weighing and measuring your packages on Poshmark when you ship them out, make it just part of the process. Keep a list. So like, you know, okay, that pair of jeans went into, it was this, you know, 10 by 10 by whatever, and it weighed this much in ounces because ounces is what it works out to. Um, and it just gives you a list that you can go back to that's helpful in the long run. So it's a little trip tip there. Um, you can do shipping worldwide. I have not clicked on that yet because I want to get used to listing and to figuring things out. And it was interesting because I have, I listed a hat and it was somebody in Finland. Was it Finland, Paul? Yeah. Somebody in Finland asked about shipping to them, how much it would cost. And that was all we heard. So Paul figured it out. And anyway, so even though, you might not offer worldwide shipping. They can still see your listings and they can message you and ask you questions. Um, so they do have a, a boost your listings program where you can add a little promotion to the listing. If the user clicks on your listing or likes your listing, if they buy that listing from that click from that like within 28 days, you will be charged, I believe it's 8% on that that sale price. That's the cost. And you only pay it if it sells via that promoted or boosted listing, which I, it, from what I understand to me, that's not too bad. You know what, if you can boost your listing and it's interesting because the boosted listing shows up at certain place, but your regular listing of the same item shows up as well. So somebody could actually buy it from the regular listing and you don't have to pay the boost. So it's interesting. So I have not done a lot on Depop yet. I think we're only at just over maybe 30 listings, maybe. I'm doing it slowly. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to do it right. <laughs> sure, I'm making mistakes. 100% I am making mistakes. It is weird being an, exp an experienced seller, you know, five plus years. I do know what I'm doing, but going to a new platform I feel like, you know, like a duck out of water. I just, I'm shaking my head going, but well, what about this? And then what about this? And it took me a couple of cross listings to realize it was only eight photos. No, yeah, I got to make sure my photos are right and things like that. So it's a learning curve and it's very strange. 
And I don't know if it's going to be a huge success or anything, but for me, branching out feels the right thing to do right now. With everything going on with Poshmark, Poshmark Canada is fine for me right now. Posh US is absolutely dead in the water right now. And I don't know what's going on with the whole platform over there. I don't know if it was the fee structure thing, everything that's going on. Um, so it's really, really slow over there for me. So I need something else because that's the name of the game, diversifying and making sure that you get eyes on your listings. And for me, going to a platform that's a little bit different is really good for my brain. It, it helps to open my eyes to different ways of marketing my, my items and maybe fixing up my photos, things like that. So it's a really good sort of, ex well, it's, ex it's an experiment, but it's a really good move on my part, I think. I don't know, like I said, I don't know how successful it will be. I don't know how busy Depop is. And really, I went looking on YouTube to see if I could find some information, you know, how do we do this and what, what's required and things like that. And there are a few videos out there, but there's a lot that are like two, three, four years old that I'm not going to be watching. Even They might be beneficial, but I want more recent, you know, things to, to tell me what am I supposed to be doing on Depop. I know that like people do say about modeling. I heard someone saying you need to re be refreshing your listings. So that just basically means you go in and you edit it and then you just list it again. So it's like on Poshmark, if you just open, you go to edit and then you just go next. So I've been doing that, you know, every other day I've been going in and just redoing it. Uh, Depop is on the desktop and it's on an app. So I like that about it. I like that there's no seller fees. I'm going to have to play with my prices, I think, because the it's, you go from Poshmark where you have to think about, you know, okay, you know, shipping discounts and the fees and everything else going to somewhere where has, they have no fees for the sellers. It's like, okay, so it is a learning curve, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. I, remember signing up this was a f i signed up probably six months ago just on a lark and didn't do anything with it <laughs> so i don't remember exactly what i did it wasn't hard i know that you can be in canada like i said or you can be in the states and you can ship worldwide which is kind of cool and i'm hoping that we make some sales over there i know that we have sold a couple of hats already from like a couple months ago right paul uh in the last month or so. In the last month or so, which is cool. So I will continue going through my closet, trying to pick the, the you know, the really good trendy stuff that people want to buy. We'll see what happens. And you know, it opens my eyes when I go sourcing again to different things, which is good. I'm going to be looking more at style than I am at brand as well, but making sure the quality is still there. Anyway, that is it for now. Uh, if you have any questions about Depop, Put them in the comments below and maybe we can work on them together. I'll see what I can find out from other people. And if you know anything about Depop, if I've said something that's totally wrong, let me know, okay? Okay, that's it for today. It is Sunday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. It's Monday tomorrow, so that is a photograph day. I'm going to spend two to three hours photographing everything that is sort of been sitting around and I haven't done anything with. I want to sort of clean up my, my death pile again and go from there. So yeah, that's it. Everybody have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.